here we go. You call that a manual? That's not a manual. This is a manual. 830 pages. That's not multiple languages. 830 pages of just English technical jargon. Jesus Christ. By default, a continuous sweep measurement makes an acquisition slightly longer than the stimulus. To include possible time delayed artifacts, create. So, this is it then. This is the Audio Precision APX555 Audio Analyzer. This, for those who don't know, is currently the highest performance audio analyzer that you can purchase, and it comes with a starting price of £30,000. That's an immense amount of money, and it's not something which I could have ever done myself. And so this video is being made for three reasons. The first is to talk about some of the other equipment which I've also got here, and how I've got my test set up, well, set up. The second is to talk a little bit about my approach to objectivism versus subjectivism. And the third, and the most important, is to say thank you to everyone who made this happen. This would not have happened without the immense generosity of all of my patrons and several industry contributors as well. You'll notice that the top is not exactly a stock livery, and that's because I said to my patrons, if you've contributed $100 in total over the course of your patronage, then you can send any image you like in, and as long as it's not uh, not safe for work, I will put it as a sticker on the top of the analyzer. Obviously some people have made absolutely incredibly generous donations, and so some of them have got quite big stickers, and quite a few people pooled all their space together to make one big sticker. So this was just a fun way to say thank you to everyone who made this happen. You guys are absolutely incredible. It's not just patrons though. A huge thank you to Chris Conacher at Audiophile Style, and a huge thank you to Gino and Sherry at Gashelli Labs, not just for the financial contribution, but for all the help and advice that they've also given me. Those guys are absolutely fantastic to talk to. You've been brilliant. And most of all, thank you to Headphones.com. They have made an incredibly generous donation and they are my first sponsor. So thank you very much, Headphones.com. And thank you everyone who has contributed towards this. You guys are incredible and I could not have done this without you. The fact that the channel has gone from in less than a year, well, nothing, to having videos which are actually impacting the industry and acquiring stuff like this is nothing short of incredible and I can't wait to see what happens next. So, if you're wondering why on earth would you pay 30000 for this, why is this better than a normal ADC, I will have a dedicated video coming on that which explains exactly why an audio analyzer is beneficial, why you'd pay so much for it, so that's coming in another video. So, let's talk a little bit about how I've got this setup set up. The first thing is power. I have all of my audio equipment, including the measurement setup, on a completely isolated power circuit in the house. There is nothing else on this power circuit other than something related to audio. Though, I do still need to use my PC, because the analyzer has to be connected to a PC. Something has to run the software. So, I have my PC going through this, the iFi iGalvanic, which is a full USB 3.0 galvanic isolator. That means that absolutely no noise, no ground loops, no nothing can possibly get through, so it's effectively still disconnected from the PC, but it can transfer data. So, that's fantastic. This is an iFi iUSB 3.0. This is on kind loan from iFi. So this feeds this, and this acts as, well, it does two things. Firstly, it acts as a hub so that I can connect the analyzer and a DAC for testing at the same time. And also, it just acts as a really ideal USB source. And that makes sure that there's no way that the noise from the PC or any other gremlins are possibly causing any negative influence on the measurement. I don't want anyone to say, well, it's only measuring that bad because you've got it directly connected to a PC or you've got a ground loop or something like that. So that just means that I've got an absolutely ideal source and it alleviates any of those problems. So thank you very much, iFi, for lending that. If I'm needing to use SPDAF, AES, or Optical, then I will actually use the analyzer itself, as this has the Advanced Digital I.O. module, which has an extremely high performance clock, extremely high performance digital out, and so I'll use that for feeding the DAC. So, cables then. This is obviously going to be a bit of a controversial one, but I don't care if you think the cables make a difference. If you have them, then there's no reason not to use a good high quality shielded cable. AudioQuest has kindly loaned me a handful of their Mackenzie line analog interconnects and their carbon line digital interconnects of BNC, SPDIF, 
AES and a USB one as well. So that's what will be used for any measurements. If though there's a situation where a much more flexible cable is needed, then I have a handful of these Van Dam silver plated copper fully shielded with Amphenol connector interconnect. So I'll be using those. Now that brings us on to this piece of kit. DACs and preamps are expected to see a very high input impedance. You know, your amp will have an input impedance of 50,000 ohms or 100 kilo ohms, and that means that it doesn't pull any current whatsoever. But a headphone amp doesn't. A headphone amp is expecting to drive a load of 32 ohms or 12 ohms or 60 ohms or something like that. This audio analyzer has internally the ability to lower the input impedance to as low as 300 ohms. So you can test that directly, but you can't test something as low as 32 ohms, for example, which is what's really gonna show where a headphone amp is current limiting. That is where this comes in. This is the Neurochrome headphone dummy load, and this basically is a pretend headphone for an amplifier. It has a network of resistors and capacitors inside, which allows you to adjust the impedance shown to the, head uh, to the headphone amplifier by 600 ohms, 300 ohms, 50, 32, 20, 16, and 12. And it also has these capacitors to allow for a little bit of a reactive load simulation. So that's really helpful as well. So that will allow me to properly stress test headphone amps. So that's the hardware. The software I will talk about in another video, which will explain exactly why this is better than just getting an ADC and what you can do with an ADC. Because a good ADC is a really powerful tool and you can look into a lot of stuff with it. But Let's talk about why this is important. Why have I got this? What am I intending to do with it? I've been asked more than a few times whether I'd consider myself an objectivist or a subjectivist, what my view on measurements in general is, and I have a few main opinions. Measurements can tell you a lot about how something is likely to sound, but what subjectively sounds best and what objectively performs best are not always aligned. If this was the case, then tube amps and a lot of R2R DACs would sound awful, and yet they don't. If there is a demonstrable objective difference between two products, even very small, then there is reason to suspect it might sound different. The threshold of audibility for various objective aspects or combinations thereof have not been sufficiently tested to make an absolute determination of what is or isn't audible. But if something measures absolutely identically in every possible test you can throw at it, then there is no reason to believe that it sounds different unless there is a controlled blind test to prove it. I didn't get this analyzer to tell you what product has the lowest harmonic distortion. I got it to properly look into the behavior of products and find out the interesting stuff about what they're doing, why they sound the way they do, and really explore. My Aries 2 video, where we looked at whether or not it was actually non-oversampling, or the MQA video for example, or even the differences in noise between different digital sources, which you can see on my website, are great examples of what I hope I can do with this. It's about proper exploration, not just putting a number on things. I feel that this hobby, and the industry itself to an extent, has become incredibly polarised between objectivist and subjectivist, and I see myself as being somewhere in the middle. Far too many people are very much into the 100% subjectivist category, and will not so much as consider any objective evidence of anything. They've tried the ultra signed DAX and amps and didn't enjoy them at all, so now they discount objective performance completely. Or they feel that they heard a massive improvement with a new USB cable, which couldn't be explained in any objective fashion. Just trust your ears is often the saying. The problem is that our ears and our memory are very unreliable. No human being can escape the influence of placebo, expectation bias, and other factors which will convince them that a difference or improvement is heard, when in reality it doesn't exist. It does not matter how experienced you are or how good your hearing is. Everyone is susceptible to these factors. This leads people to spending money on or bickering on the internet about things which they feel is the case, even if they've never actually properly tested it or have any evidence for it. The big issue with pure subjectivism is that what is genuinely better, and what is simply the result of bias or placebo, is nearly impossible to distinguish. On the other hand, far too many people are into the 100% objectivist camp, and there are a few major problems with this group. The first is that often, far too much weight is put into one single metric, such as THD plus N or Synad. Products are ranked based on this one performance factor and other aspects are sometimes outright ignored. This has even led to things such as manufacturers saying that they will not fix issues, such as the IMD hump on an ESS DAC, because it would slightly lower the THD performance. And even though IMD is vastly more audible to the human ear than THD, and therefore it would be completely reasonable to make this trade-off, a couple dB of Synad can mean that you're no longer at the top of the performance charts on certain websites. 
even though actually your DAC now sounds better. To me, being objective does not mean looking at one number and judging a product almost entirely based on that. A much more thorough picture is needed to properly evaluate something. The second issue is the assumption that better objective performance is unquestionably a good thing subjectively. There are plenty of products which measure amazing and sound awful, or measure mediocre and sound great. Instead of just looking at what is objectively best, I'm much more interested in looking at the actual differences so we can hopefully get a better understanding of why good sounding products sound good. Thorough testing and evaluation should include both objective evidence and subjective listening. And the third issue is that many assumptions are made about when something is or isn't audible. To the extent that many people believe that a majority of the products on the market today sound absolutely identical and hi-fi is effectively solved. I do not believe this is the case, and many of these assumptions about what is or isn't audible are based on either nothing, or sometimes just one or two studies, which may not have even been conducted particularly thoroughly. The truth is, we know a lot less about human perception than we'd like to admit, and it's important to keep an open mind, though not so open that your brain falls out and you start buying quantum stickers. In summary, I'm somewhere in the middle, and I want to start and engage in interesting, constructive discussions with you guys and look properly into why so many of these fantastic audio products sound the way they do, rather than just assuming that everything I hear is true and not bothering to check, or assuming that our ears are oscilloscopes and that if it measures better, it must sound better. There is a reasonable middle ground to be found somewhere. And of course, if there's something in particular that you would like me to take a look into or test, then send me a message on Discord or the private patron chat. As well as subjective reviews, both here and on my website, I will also be posting full comprehensive measurement reports of just about anything that comes across my desk. And if you have a device that you would like to get measured, then I would be more than happy to do so. I can't express how grateful I am to everyone who has contributed to making this happen. Thank you so much, especially to all of my patrons. This analyzer does still have a bit left to pay off on it, but once that's done, then the next target will be acquiring a headphone measurement rig. If you'd like to help make that happen, then please do consider supporting on Patreon or Subscribestar. Thank you so much to my crazy Summit 5 people, Dan Mellinger, Fake Australian Accent, G'day Mate, Ross Kyle, Eskimo Bob, King Jong Un, Dizarasta, and Commodus, my legend tier subscribers, Chris, CK Yozizawa Zhu, Jan R, Jidan the Sheba, and Gravitas. And my diamond tier subscribers, Naivotsu, Adam Cardos, Bean Boawito, Chandler Bassett, Daniel Hibiak, Dwayne Butler, Gizmo1K, Grant Evans, Jeremy Zagorski, Lana Bennett, Luxifer, Nino, Pokey, and Alont. You guys make this happen. Thank you so much.